Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the WooCommerce by WebSync webinar. My name is Vicky, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. Today's session will run for approximately half an hour, with time for questions at the end. Questions can be submitted at any time in the question box on the webinar's control panel. Our presenter today is Mike Pierotti. Mike is head developer and founder of WebSync with 20 years dev experience. I'll now hand you over to Mike for today's presentation. Thank you, Vic. Um, as uh, she mentioned in the introduction, I'm the uh, founder and head developer of WebSync. Uh, we are an Adelaide-based uh, company and we deal exclusively in the, uh, I guess, e-commerce to accounting space. Uh, so that's our area of expertise. So today we'll be running through our integration between Reckon Accounts hosted and WooCommerce. Um, we've just got a few slides which uh, I'll run through, then we'll go through the uh, integration itself, signing up um, and some options there. I will just say from the get-go we are doing WooCommerce, but we do also support Shopify and, uh, and a few others as well. So for now we'll just do WooCommerce. It's a very good platform, it's free and a lot of people seem to have it. So we'll just get started here. So the first slide. So who is WebSync for, essentially? So it's anyone in the on online retailing space or anyone selling online. Um, it's for existing Reckon accounts hosted clients who perhaps don't sell online yet, but are looking to move towards online um, or perhaps they you know, have a website, but it's it's not quite um, a fully functioning web store yet and they'd like to move towards that. It's also for bookkeepers and accountants, um, you know, with existing clients. So the main point being is WebSync is for the people on the front line, the customers themselves, and it's also for bookkeepers so and accountants. So it's, it's flexible enough to cater to both ends of the market. But the big question is why would you use WebSync? The obvious one is time saving. What it will do is, you know, sync your orders and your inventory from one system to the other. So the obvious answer there is saving you on double handling. But the one that people often miss is not, not only the double handling time saving, but it's fixing mistakes. You know, when an invoice, you know, might miss, be missing a line or there's a few cents here and there, things don't reconcile. That's a large time cost in going back and finding mistakes. When a system syncs one for one or cent for cent, you don't have those sorts of mistakes. So the time saving is really quite large. And when you add up, you know, if you're doing 10, 15, 20, 100 orders a month, it's quite significant. It is a set and forget system. Um, there is some setup and once that's done, it essentially just runs in the background, doesn't need to do anything. It's an employee that shows up, does its job, doesn't complain and just works. There is some ongoing maintenance if you change things like tax codes in Reckon, but that's very rare. Like anything, it is, uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, it requires some, you know, some maintenance. However, it is more or less set and forget. We also provide uh, complete onboarding, and this can be from um, the very start. So, how do you connect your WooCommerce to WebSync? How do you uh, connect your Reckon accounts hosted? And how do you configure the sync? Users are at a, all users are at a different stage. Um, so some people need more help than others and that's fine. That's part of the service we provide because at the end of the day, um, our goal is to get you up and running as quickly and easily as possible. The other thing, look, is in this space, there's a lot of complex pricing. We do a very simple pricing structure. If, if you've got a small shop, it's one price. If you've got a large shop, and you exceed a certain number of transactions, that's another price. A lot of people do per, per transaction prices and it gets very complicated. We just wanna keep it simple. We're just concerned about getting up and running and that's it. Um, there is no cost for the onboarding, I should add. So that's all part of the package. And basically what we do is we just make it easy for you to connect your platforms. That's what we, that's the business we're in and that's our end goal. So what does the integration do? 
well, it's obviously an integration between Reckon and WooCommerce. Um, but the first thing it does, and probably the what most people want, is bringing orders in. So an order is created in WooCommerce. Um, you can set your uh, different status statuses for what to bring in, which I'll show you shortly. This also includes the freight line, um, and it does have a separate freight code, so you can um, you can sort that out as well. It actually syncs the correct uh, Reckon Accounts tax codes as well, which is something that a lot of people have trouble with um, getting that tax right. So I'll show you that as well, how that works. We can do inventory updates as well. So, you know, price, description and quantity. Um, if it changes in, say, Reckon, you'd like that price to flow through to WooCommerce or the description. And the big one's quantity. Um, you should be using Reckon as your inventory source of truth rather than WooCommerce. So if you're selling things over the counter or over the phone and you might have a stock outage, you need that quantity to flow into WooCommerce so you're not overselling on the web. Um, you know, web customers are notoriously unforgiving for that sort of thing. So keeping that all in one is, you know, all integrated is, is key. Um, it also creates customers. So if you want to, and you don't have to obviously, but this is an option to say, anytime an order comes in, let's check if that customer exists on some predefined fields. If they don't, we can create a new customer. So this will give you, uh, you know, some flexibility on how you report on your customers from within Reckon. Uh, it gives you a bit of history. Now you don't have to do that. You can also just have a generic uh, customer as well, just like online sales or something like that. And there is a new inventory item sync. So when inventory is created in, say, uh, Reckon, it will then flow through to WooCommerce. This is a 50-50 one that people use. Um, the, the whole reason being, you know, I've got you know, 2,000 items in Reckon and I don't want them in necessarily all in Woo. So we'll just uh, turn that off. But, you know, again, that's customer by customer basis. The system runs at set intervals. Um, so we can set that, you know, based on your needs, one hour, four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, um, and that will just run. You get notifications on any uh, failures or any um, successes. Generally, um, once it's set up correctly, you won't get any failures. Um, and I'll show you the fallbacks on that. We've also got detailed logging. Uh, we have we have high level logging, uh, which will just give you a, basically a rundown of, uh, of what's happened, what's come through and what's failed. And then on the detailed side, you can actually drill in and see you know, step by step what happened during that sync. So we do have a decent way to audit our syncs um, so we can see what's going on, which, um, you know, for some customers that is quite important for others, you know, it's, it's good to know it's there. And as mentioned before, there is full onboarding. I just want to really emphasize that because people uh, do find <clears throat> some of these, uh, options confusing um, even some things like connecting uh, Reckon to WebSync you know is, is foreign territory for them so you know uh, I do it day day in and day out so for me it's second nature but I understand you know this is it can be a new territory like I said so we certainly help everyone along with that and that's you know kind of all part of the service. We're based in Australia. Um, nothing is outsourced overseas. So if you're going to talk to someone, you'll talk to someone in Australia. If you get a reply from an email, it's from someone in Australia. So we we understand you know the local uh, market, so to speak, the local you know how people want to be serviced in Australia. So that's a little bit about uh, an overview about WebSync. And now I will just jump into the app itself. So it is web-based as you'd expect. Um, this is your login. Now I'll just sign up a new account here. So I'll just put my name in here, email, um, probably got some fake ones. So I just need to make sure I put an email, unique email address, business name here. I'll just put web store. Here we've got an option for customers to say as well um, what 
uh, integration you're interested in and this just prompts it uh, prompts the system to give you a wizard which I'll show you shortly so I'll say we're interested in WooCommerce and Reckon uh, do you want help setting up it's free so you can just say yes or no on there everyone says yes of course um, and then we just put a password in I'll just do that quickly okay so passwords match now we just create our account that just takes a second to register our account in the system. Now the first thing we see here is we get our wizard, um, which I won't do today, but at any point you can come in and say, I wanna set up a new, um, a new sync using the wizard. The wizard just makes it uh, easy for, for anyone setting it up. It's just a step-by-step -step process rather than having to do it um, by the menus which you just do here. So just on the dashboard quickly, uh, we can see here we've got no transactions, no connections, um, because it's just a trial account, I've got zero of one. You can have multiple connections. So if you do have, say, two or three stores, you can you know, add more connections to that. And we've just got a graph here, obviously being a brand new account, nothing has been synced yet. So the first thing we do, is in our connections we just need to add two connections so obviously we're going to add a WooCommerce in this one um, so I'll just call this Woo and we then um, set this up using a URL um, I'll just have to use one of my test ones so I'm going to just hit connect to WooCommerce and what this does is this just takes us through a process to um, authorize WooCommerce without having to go in and create API keys and that sort of thing manually, which just means it's less of a process for the for the user. We can connect, uh, check our connection here. This just takes a moment to connect into WooCommerce, and it comes back and says, "All right, we've connected successfully." So that's that's part one. So that's how we connect uh, to WooCommerce. We can change the label at any point. We can disconnect it and we can change the uh, URL. URL should it change. That's pretty rare, but it can. The next one that we would then want to connect to is uh, Reckon. So I'll just say this here. These are all our choices here, but for this one, we'll just be doing Reckon. So when I say connection, I should, sorry, just clarify that a connection is the two endpoints or the two sources of data or a source of data and a destination. So we need the connections. Uh, so one being Reckon and the second being um, uh, WooCommerce. Well, WooCommerce being first, Reckon the second, if you want to say WooCommerce is uh, sending the data across. Anyway, so once we come here, we now just need to, so basically I've just clicked the connect to your Reckon account, which will then bring up the sign in for Reckon. So I'll sign in here. And at that point, it's gone through an authorized web sync, brought us back. And we can see here that we do actually have our, um, if you have more than one company file, we'll just list them here. So we can see that's connected um, correctly there. Um, we do need a username and password uh, for that, which that does escape me at the moment. Um, however, if I do come into a different one here, I'll swap out to a to an older file. So if we come into the sync itself, uh, we can see here. We've got a WooCommerce and um, Reckon account. So within the, uh, yep. So within the system here, we can see what we've got. So essentially, we got we've got a few options. So uh, when orders creating a WooCommerce, creating an invoice in Reckon. Uh, sync inventory between Reckon and WooCommerce and when an item is created in WooCommerce send it to Reckon. I will just cover off that because there are some changes about to be released on that front as well. 
So here we can see we've got processing and completed as our statuses. Um, we are adding a few more in there. These are generally the ones you're gonna need to sync across. So an item, you know, an order has been processed or it's been completed. This is generally uh, once a sale has been actually paid for. So here we would just say, okay, let's do completed. Um, processing means it hasn't been shipped yet technically. So let's say we wanna say it's been shipped and that is the process, we'll send that through. Here we say, do we wanna send orders with a customer type, existing code or create customer? So if we create a customer, um, it will do it if it doesn't exist. And the customers are matched on the first name and last name is the full name in Reckon and an email address. Because obviously you can have, you know, more than one um, Sam Smiths, for example. However, if we do just wanna use an existing code, so if keeping that information is not overly important, that's no problem. We can just um, select a generic customer. Now, what we have decided to do is um, sync all this data in in real time from Reckon. So there is no, um, I guess there's no two ways about it that when I select online shop, it is online shop. And there, so what, what a lot of other um, systems have issues with is relying on user input, it's easy to type online dash shop and I don't know, miss out the, the, the hyphen or something like that. And instantly your orders will be rejected because the API can't find online shop customer. So if we do it like this, it's the direct information from Reckon. So it can't be any other which way. Send, uh, send order type as invoice. At this stage, we only have the choice of invoice. Um, there may be, that may be extended out. For other systems, there is the choice of invoice and, and order. So that's just a bit of a hangover from that. Um, we've also got the choice to use the WooCommerce invoice as the Reckon invoice. In this case, we have that switched on. So um, if it is a, you know, 1345, that's what it will become in Reckon. Otherwise, it can just use the auto reckon number. Uh, the other thing as well is we can actually use a prefix too. So if we wanna just distinguish in the system, uh, we orders or Shopify or you know online orders, you know we can just put a prefix online, whatever it might be. Um, and then that'll just flow through in that, that, to that manner, but this does need to be ticked on for that to work. There is some options here around, uh, do you wanna match the SKU or the name? Um, to match into the Reckon inventory field. Um, I always recommend SKU, but that name is there because someone does want it. Um, then we have just some options here around the shipping code. So this is a um, bit of a test account here, but what we can see is we've got some non-inventory codes. Uh, we've got no service items, no other charge items, and we do have a whole bunch of inventory items. So this, so when we sync in the data from Reckon, we just divide it up um, so you actually know what you're selecting. Um, so obviously I want to select my freight code. Um, so anytime we have a freight charge, um, it'll just go through as a, as a line at the end uh, with that code. The real key to our sync is, um, versus others is, is the non-stock, um, I think. You know, having worked in this space for a long time um, in different, in many different facets, the, the thing is too many other systems rely on a perfect world and it's not a perfect world. You know, something might be set up in WooCommerce and it just doesn't match for whatever reason. It's, it's a typo, it's a new product, a SKU wasn't entered. There's 101 reasons why something might not match. So the non-stock is, real, is really key. Um, so anything that falls, you know, it's, it's possibly going to fail. It doesn't exist in Reckon for whatever reason. We just fall back onto this non-stock code so the order doesn't fail. At least the order is in the system and you can actually deal with it there and then. You know, this might be an issue of, say, like I said, you know, the, the SKU just isn't matching in, in WooCommerce or, you know, something's changed in, in Reckon, there's a number of things. So that's that's something that really makes our 
our system quite um, quite reliable. Just moving on, um, so then do the prices in WooCommerce include tax? Um, just a note on the tax in WooCommerce, we have just started extending this out um, for a couple of other platforms and it'll be in the Reckon one oh, probably by the end of the week. Uh, we actually match your tax codes in WooCommerce to the tax codes in Reckon. Um, it just gives a much more reliable um, syncing process as well. So uh, that's just something to keep an eye out for. But for now, we've just got the, yes, they include tax. And then we can just map um, very generically, um, GST free and, oh, where's my GST free? Anyway, I'll just do that one and GST. So the reason we uh, are gonna start introducing the mapping is, is things especially for wet tax um, you know perhaps you've got wet and GST set up in rec uh, sorry in WooCommerce in this instance you'll be able to map your GST to GST your wet items to your wet items um, we seem to have a, a, a very strong following when it comes to um, wineries with Reckon more so than any other system so that's certainly something that um, we'll be seeing, uh, sending through shortly. So we've got the option here as well to send um, inventory uh, information between the two systems. So we can decide what goes where and in which direction. So firstly, we're back to how do we match the, uh, the items. So the SKU is, is definitely best practice. Um, from here we can say yes I do want to sync the pricing and we can actually say which direction we want to go. Generally we're going to say look it's reckoned to WooCommerce but every now and then it's the other way for whatever reason, um, no judgment from me. So basically we can say yeah I do want to sync the pricing, no I don't want to sync the description but yes I do want to sync the quantity and the quantity is definitely from reckoned to WooCommerce. So that's the flexibility we can do. And if, if you really wanted, you could send your des description from WooCommerce into Reckon. You know, that might be, that's probably more a case, I think, than anything, because you might say our customer facing items on um, on WooCommerce should be reflected in, in Reckon. Um, you might actually send invoices from Reckon to, to e-commerce customers. So that, that might be a scenario there that you want to do that. So that's some flexible options there about the inventory. Again, if you don't want to do the inventory at all, you can just turn it off. The system doesn't care. It'll just, when it does its runs, it just looks who, who has this turned on and who doesn't essentially. So this is one that's just getting a bit of a facelift as, uh, as we speak as well. And this is just how we create an item. At the moment, this is WooCommerce to Reckon, um, whereas now it's going to be bi-directional, similar um, as this one here. Um, so essentially, you know, there'll just be some options how it comes through. At the moment, it just, uh, how do we set it up? Um, inventory or non-inventory? Um, you know, what are we going to use as the Reckon list ID, income account, cost of goods and inventory asset? Uh, just for those sorts of things there. Uh, that, that's the minimum information we need from Reckon uh, to create an item in Reckon. Oh, but yeah, like I said, that will be bi-directional. So there'll be options depending uh, if you're going from Reckon into WooCommerce or, or vice versa. Uh, when we release that, that will also be released uh, across other platforms as well. So that'll be in um, uh, the Shopify um, platform too. Um, and so basically once we've made our changes, we just save our settings. Then every time you can see the load bar up the top, this here is just basically retrieving our information straight from RA, Reckon I should say. So basically this just means like what I was saying before in regards to all our, all our data is real time. Um, so this means that, you know, if you were to say, oh, I do want to sync it to a customer, but it's not here right now. If you were to go and up, uh, make an update into Reckon, save that, you could just reload this page and it's and it will appear here now. 
So it's all very much real time. Um, and our aim is to really help you, the end user, take the guesswork out of, um, you know, selecting the right customer or, you know, the right freight code, things like that. Further to the onboarding, this is what we do with you. So this from the connections right up to the sync, uh, we configure this for you or with you or just offer advice. So, you know, some people can get most of this done um, and then just want us to have a run an eye over it and have a look. Other people, no, please do it all. Um, the other thing that we can offer as well is a bit of advice. We do see a lot of things, oh, what should I use here? You know, maybe don't use an inventory item, actually use a non-stock code, things like that. There's always a question. Um, and like I said, people generally, you know, there's not something they do every day. So we're, we're happy to offer advice and, um, and help them along the process. I'm conscious of the time. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you the logs. So in here, uh, we do, obviously this being a test account here, we've got a whole bunch of logs. Uh, a lot of fails. Um, we've got some references from the destination. Um, and if we click on this, we'll get a detailed log here. So we've got a unique ID for every log. So we can always go back and track that and see what the uh, see what the problems are there. Um, being a account, we've also then got our logs here. So if you've got more than one log, uh, uh, sorry, more than one sync, you'll have all your logs in one one place as well. So that's really about it for now. Um, like I did mention before, we do have quite a number of different sinks, um, which I'll just quickly, I can't show you on this one, um, but we do have Reckon and some other payroll uh, software, uh, Shopify as mentioned, and we are just in the process of uh, finishing off uh, a Reckon to Google as well. Um, so you can actually export out your WooCommerce inventory um, to, and that shouldn't be QuickBooks, apologies, um, and then we can actually re-import it and we've got that as well for, um, for Reckon. So you can do some edits on your, on your list items and things like that. So, sorry, this is a test account, so those logos aren't, uh, aren't correct. That's our development account. Um, so really, that's that's all from me. So hopefully you got some questions. Um, so I'll hand it back to Vic and uh, we'll go from there. Hi, Mike. Um, there's no questions as yet. If anyone does have any, please just type them in now. I'll just give it a minute. Yep. One thing I will just say as well, um, just what we consider a transaction as well. So we do have a transaction limit on our, uh, so we've got two pricing tiers, 29 a month and 49 a month. The 29 a month is 100 transactions. Uh, we consider an order a transaction. So inventory update is not a transaction. So there can be unlimited updates of that nature, uh, creating new inventory, also not a transaction. It's simply orders. So just to make it a bit more simple. Okay, I've just got a question. Is there an app available so it could be accessed on phone or iPad or would it still be um, using the web? Yep, still use the web. Um, if I can do it quickly, it is all um, responsive. So I can kind of show you how that would look. Um, just if I... So basically here, um, you know, you've got your menus like that. So that's... Um, it is responsive. It looks okay. That's not great, but it looks much better on, say, a iPad or something like that. But yeah, there's certainly no reason you can't access it from from that sort of thing. Thanks, Mike. That's the end of the questions. All right, that was easy. So thank you for the presentation today and thank you all for attending. If you would like a recording of this webinar, please email me at training at and I can forward that on. And if you do have any further questions, please just email us again at training. We can forward them on. And thank you for attending and have a lovely day. Thanks, everyone.